far between. And in the last match, there were a couple situations where Chris could have tried to put an Emrakul onto the battlefield, mm -hmm. and that would have really sealed it up, whereas some rugged decks have access to the famed Planeswalker. So Ben puts back two lands, what it looks like, probably. Yeah, he's got tons of them. Yeah, he's going to ship back two lands and then crack that Misty Rainforest, make sure he doesn't draw either of the two ones he put on, puts on top, or at least lessens his chances of doing so. All right. Um, Bank goes on to 18, which I told us aren't really that relevant in this matchup. Uh, Sean Ryan's especially isn't that relevant. Ben Swartz's could be relevant in if some cases. Tom hits the board. Tom Rebuff hits the board. Uh, progenitus. Well, Progenitus is just two swings usually, no matter what. Sometimes, but if you get down to say like 12 and there's a couple noble hierarchs down there, it can definitely change things up. We, mm -hmm. I, I've definitely seen games where it only took a single hit from Progenitus to finish. Plus, Ancient Tomb damage, it piles up really fast too. So it's easy to get down to that, you know, 12 10 range. All right, untapped draws. Yep. And I think, I think we see Grimonolith this turn. Yeah, I think he'll probably play a Grimonolith. All right, looking at his hand, we see. Force, Ancient Tomb, just tons of lands, Slaughter Pact. Ben needed to find things that weren't two islands on that brainstorm. <laughs> ben starts to play his land but takes it back. Okay, there we go. Ancient Tomb taking two, dropping to 16, and then we're going to see... Is there a reason why he would do that? Nope. Drops back up to 18, untaps the tomb. Maybe he's not going to go that route. Ben flicking through the cards in his hand, trying to figure out the line of play he wants. I mean, this just, I mean, if he taps the two uh, lands, that tells him that he doesn't have Brainstorm to end of turn. Uh, but if he taps the tomb, he just takes extra damage. That might be relevant. And I don't know how much information saying you don't have Brainstorm really gives Sean, right? Yeah. I mean, he could very well just be trying to set up for a kill next turn. Mm. Sean would never know the difference. Oh, uh, he does have a Ponder in his hand. Oh, yeah, there's a Ponder. That was really an option last turn, but yeah. maybe he'll see any, I think... Maybe Ben wants to see if he can find one piece of the combo and then knows what he's digging for with the other. Maybe see if he finds a fetch land or something. Yeah, especially since Sean Ryan is playing a slow game with him. and Sean Ryan also has mental missteps, too, mm -hmm. which is worth noting. You don't want to just get cut off of your ponders. Not that. Not that. I mean, not that. I mean, if you go ponder, like, he, it's, I mean, that's what Sean Ryan is going to counter with the mental miss missteps. Yeah, anyway. So course. I guess waiting doesn't really help. It actually hinders you in a sense. But mm -hmm. I kind of like waiting here. This is kind of like the preordained thing, right? You want to cast it when you know what you want instead of yeah, just like of randomly jamming it that out there. That completely makes sense. So if Ben draws an Emrakul, it's going to be, you know, be more mm -hmm. like he can find show and tell or something like that. So Sean's doing some activity over there. Oh, he just cracks the land in a turn. Down comes Volcanic Island. So, yeah, he just passes it. I mean, the one thing that I I like about the rug deck is he keeps winning games. <laughs> but it's not having that much action in the early turns. Oh, Vendillion Click gets dropped. That, that, that's going to help. Yeah, so the I mean, Clicks... Where does Clicks add on his deck list? Oh, there's three. Down there at the bottom of the spells. Oh, he put them in the spells. Okay, we missed that. Yeah, he has three. <laughs> I, no, I guess it's like a 3-1 three spell, I guess. 3-1 three, three duress. So, yeah, I missed the fact he had three vanilla clicks. Make sure we didn't miss a J. All right, no, it's not in the lands anywhere. Okay, yeah. so vanilla click comes down, and I think he's going to take a peek at Ben's hand. All right, this, this is a valuable information. So there's a pact of negation, a force of will, a show and tell, a slaughter... Or is that two pact negations? Oh, that's a summoning pact. So, the th I mean, do you, do you even take anything? Is this easy? I mean, you can take show and tell on that. That limits any chop deck to Emrakul, but... Um, well, you definitely don't take either of the packs or forest. The question is really short, tell or bust. You can take... I think taking show and tell. I mean, he's he's. Does Sean have a, have a force in his hand? So he takes show and tell, and that just means any Emrakul is bad to top deck, but he still can cast Hive Mind. If Sean has, I trust the Hive Mind. And there's the Hive Mind. If so, if Sean has a force. I like taking that. If he doesn't, I think I'd just leave it because yeah. there's just too many things that could go wrong. So do you think he goes for it here? 
He beats one force of will. Yeah, I, th I think Ben just goes for it. Yeah, that's a that's an insane top deck. Ben has been doing such insane things with his I brainstorms mean, and drawing the spells that he needs. I mean, Ben's been playing well and his cards have been lining yeah. up the match. I mean, that's probably why he's in the finals right now. <laughs> I mean, that's how it goes, you know, like you yeah. play you play well, you get, you get a little lucky, capitalize on your opponent's mistakes. It's the only way you make finals. Yeah, and I mean, you're a man who knows all about making the finals yeah. and doing well in tournaments. <laughs> so you take Brad's word for it here. Sometimes you just have to... You gotta play well, but you gotta capitalize on it with uh, with some results. And I wanna <laughs> I don't see Sean Ryan's face when this comes down. All right, uh, Keith, he's counting, yeah. he's double checking. He's not over tapping here. Yeah, he is over tapping. All right, hide mind. And Sean Ryan, not too happy about that one right no. now. Yeah, unless Sean Ryan is, all right. It resolves Summoner's Pact. You can have a copy of Summoner's Pact. <laughs> hmm. I suppose I can have a copy of Summoner's Pact, can't I? Does Sean Ryan have, have two dazes? He needs two. Yeah, you have to have two dazes. You're right. Oh, actually, daze doesn't work. He doesn't have any mana untapped. Oh, yeah, so his copy of Days gets to counter hit the other copy of Days. Right, so I mean, Sean's gonna Daze, and Ben will just Daze his Days right mm -hmm. back. He's got Days for Days and all the Days. Alright, and Ben's like, alright, I will target your Days with my mm -hmm. Days. Oh, he's gotta return a land as well. Oh, well, yeah, Sean's less return a land, but. He never returned a land, but I don't, don't think it's gonna be relevant, mm -hmm. so. Summoner's Pact resolves. He goes, can go find a green creature if he would like to. I remember when I was playing the Elves combo deck, um, my opponent, I'd play against Hive Mind, it was just, just buy because my opponents just couldn't yeah. kill me with their packs. Summoner's Pact, well, I don't, I don't mind if I do. So if he goes find Dryad Arbor with his, uh, with the Pact, but that's not going to be good enough. Yeah, he doesn't have Stifle or anything. Nope. No Stifles, no way to deal with that trigger, so... Oh, the Staple is a card that might be able to make a comeback with the Hive Mind yeah, decks running around. I mean, if they have a Hive Mind, it seems like you'd have to almost have them dead if you're going to Stifle. Yeah. They might just have another pack, or they might have multiples. Right. It's not the answer to what you want. All right. And that's it. Ben Swartz takes the first game off Sean Ryan. One. And that's what I was saying. I think Ben has advantage in game one. After sideboarding, Sean gets a few more tools and might yeah. swing the game slightly. But one thing Sean him. Ryan has does not have is... Ben's run goods as of late. <laughs> I mean, personally, I feel like Hive Mind is favored in this matchup in general. Mm -hmm. um, and even after sideboarding, I think Hive Mind is still favored, but Sean's is just in the mi right mindset to be fighting yeah. Hive Mind. Of course, does his mindset compete with Ben's <laughs> run goods? Well, we're going to find <laughs> out. I mean, you know, like I said, you get a little lucky, you play well. Ben looks at the sideboarding guide. He's uh, diligently wrote down, and a lot of people make fun of people who use sideboarding guides. But, but if you're not playing a bunch of a format, it's, it's a right. great tool. Like, make fun of Ben all you want. He's in the finals of this tournament, right? Mm -hmm. So. And so they're going to the sideboard. And so I think we're going to see Sean Ryan bring those extractions. In the meantime, though, we're going to be giving away a pretty awesome prize, a badge to Gen Con. So we're going to uh, flash back to us here in a second. And hey, everyone, Gavin Verhoeven, with Brad Nelson here. So here's the deal. I'm going to ask you guys a question, just like we've been doing all night, just like we did yesterday. Same deal as before. I'm going to ask a question. You tweet your answer with the hashtag SCG Premium in it. If you answer correctly, you'll be choose one random person. I, I, can I ask the question again? You are most welcome to ask the all question, right. Brad. So once again, which is one random person for the Gen Con badge. Brad, fire off the question. All right. How many bottles of water do you think Gavin has drank over the course of this weekend? Okay, that's not the real question. You can get the real question. It's, it's a lot. It's over 30. Okay, well, <laughs> I, it is pretty unbelievable. Although Brad was a, a valiant competitor. Yeah. <laughs> valiant competitor. But I think I Ariel X put it best last week. You don't mess with Gavin when it comes to water. <laughs> um, anyway, as far as the Gen Con badge goes, so I'm just going to ask a pretty good question for you. If you want to go to Gen Con, there's just a, probably a city that you'd want to go to because that's where Gen Con is. Where's Gen Con located at? Ooh, that's a good one. So tell me where Gen Con's located, and you can win a badge to Gen Con. I know where it is. Hopefully you do, too. We talked about it and, about two hours ago. And once again, please don't enter if you aren't going to go to Gen Con. If you're, con if you're considering going to Gen Con and if you win this badge, and 
then you'd go. That's fine. But we already tried giving away the badge once last week, and it was rejected. And yeah, we, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, and we don't want to have to try giving away next week when it's so close to you know Gen Con mm -hmm. people. Hard, much harder to get uh, you know hotel Set accommodations up, yeah. and everything. So please only enter if you're going to actually win the badge. Take the badge. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy Gen Con. I'll be there. Brad will be there. Mm -hmm. Name most American pros, and they will be there too. Oh yeah, we all will. Name, name your best friends who've made top eight regionals. They'll also be there. <laughs> so it should be a really good time. I'm looking forward to meeting a bunch of friends that I've never met actually. Um, all right, well, I think we're going to take a quick break before the next round. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the competitors yeah. are taking a quick break. Oh, the quick break for the competitors. So I think they probably need a break to freshen up, and so they're going to go do that. In the meantime, uh, what do you think the takeaway from this event this weekend is, Brad? I mean, so let's talk about Standard here for a second. Right. So looking forward to Standard, we have, uh, we have Star City Games Pittsburgh next week. Yep. And... We have Nationals coming up in just a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. What do you think the big takeaways are? I think the big takeaways this weekend are the power of rug decks. I really think there's some like that weren't really tuned it well, but rug's been doing great. I think the Birthing Pod deck might be a real deck. It's, it's getting closer to being refined. We didn't see a lot of it, but there was a lot of it in the uh, the Nationals around the week around right. this weekend. Also, Cobblade Edgar Flores is showing that that deck is just a dominating force on, in the format. Uh, proving me wrong, Mono Red and Splinter Twin, both of those made top four. <laughs> I still, I still personally would not play either deck, um, but I still think they're 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 fine choices. And uh, but I think the biggest one is that Temper Steel is going to be strong. I don't know if it's going to be winning tournaments, but I know it's going to be being out in the field. People are going to start playing it. It's all over the place now, and you're going to have to prepare for that matchup. Yeah, I I agree, I agree with Brad. I think the two big takeaways from this weekend for me personally from for standard. Our tempered steel, like we saw it last weekend in Force, and people just didn't prepare as much as they yep. could have this weekend, and it was just all over the table. So if you're playing next week, bring your creeping corrosions, your evoke existences, whatever you need to fight mm -hmm. against that deck. It is fast; it'll kill you on turn four or five. We saw Mulligan down to five cards multiple times and still just overrun their opponents oh, yeah. on turn four or five. Tempered steel is not just a card. <laughs> and of course, the other big thing, of course, Cobblade. I mean. Yeah. 74 of the same 75 cards in the finals is no easy feat. And, and two different versions also making top eight. Yeah, uh, there are seven in the top uh, 16 deck lists yeah. or something like that. I mean, the thing about that, though, is... So I do feel that it's a very powerful deck, but, th like, that's deceiving. It's it's probably the most played deck as well. Really? You know, I don't know if it was the most it? played deck. I mean, I, I don't have the data. I haven't looked at, at the I'm game I'm assuming breakdown. that it was probably the most popular deck. I mean, even when Cobblade was, be like, with Stoneforge and Chase, I don't... It, it wasn't the most popular deck in a lot of tournaments. You're um, saying that Stoneforge Jace was not the most popular deck in the format? I, it was the most powerful deck, but there was a... It, at the end of its reign, it certainly was. But there, for a while, it was not uh, the most like played deck in Star City Opens. Maybe Rape uh, I mean, even after the Cobblade engine came out. That's, that's pretty, pretty impressive. I, I think we're looking it up right now here on... Uh, too much information. Too much information from Cincinnati. We can find out what the most played decks are. Uh, looks like yeah, from Cincinnati, Valco was, was the most played deck, followed by Mono Red. I and mean, that was the first weekend out of the gate. So I think there's probably some more. But yeah. All right. So so argument aside, we'll figure that out. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what too much information is this week by yeah. Glenn. Yeah. We'll find out. Also, the one other one thing I want to point out too is I think I talked to both Edgar and Nick, and they both said they're scared of the Valco matchup. Well, yeah, they back. don't seem pre very prepared for the Valakut. So, if you're looking to beat Cobblade and you're looking to race Tempered Steel, Valakut might be the deck, deck to yeah. turn to. And as far as, far as legacy, I think you're seeing a lot of what we learned this weekend playing out right in front of you. Hive Mind, I think, is the biggest story from this mm -hmm. event. I mean, it's really emerged as a competitor between this week and last week. And Ben Swartz is, is the man in the finals representing the archetype. Looks like, looks like he's taking a mulligan here. Is he? I. Not sure if Sean has already put his deck back. Ben's shuffling his deck. I don't see a hand in front of Sean. Maybe they're still drawing their opening sevens. Yeah. Ben picked up, up the first game. Think he's gonna be able to take a second too? I mean, I mean, who knows where it's gonna go? Sean Ryan has had some, you know, some slow draws with, but the Nilly Click does help. But he has also been just taking out uh, these combo decks with after sideboard having enough answers, even though you're not pushing the game. So I guess. I assumed that it was going to be kind of a fast matchup, but it really isn't. It's two combo decks, and one can kill in a turn and one cannot. But one has a little bit more disruption, so. Right. I think uh, I think we can see the game. It's going to go go for quite a few turns, but uh, 
I do feel like Sean does have the advantage. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. It it do, like so. Hive Mind has a more powerful like show. Like when it comes out, just wins. But every game that I've seen, I feel like Sean Ryan has a little bit more control over the game. And like Ben won that game off of just top deck and right. Hive Mind. I mean, Sean's playing cards that just give him more play. I mean, that's yeah. a phrase you use in, in your book, and you use a lot a lot. Where basically Sean's cards are flexible. He's got cards like Medallion Click. Yeah. He's got cards. Um, like days, and you can got counters you can choose to use at different intervals mm-hmm. that really give them a lot of play in as a gameplay that allow you to basically just do, do these little things that allow play skill to override what might naturally happen in a game. And with Ben, I mean, I he definitely has a lot of play skill too, and it's reflected in his, in his gameplay, but a lot of his cards, they just do exactly what they read. You have your combo pieces, you have your brainstorms. I think brainstorm is probably the biggest skill in Tetsu The problem deck. with Legacy, though, is like, there is that play, but I think all the decks have a ton of play in Legacy. You can I do agree. so many different things. Like, Casting Brainstorm and Ponder and when you want, how many pieces you want to combo, which combo you want to use. Uh, all, all of this is, is really great. I think, uh, I actually think in Legacy, uh, personally maybe because I don't know the format, I think having too much play is an issue and you don't want as much play in this format. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I think there's a there's a balance. Because there's a lot of ways to make mistakes. There's a lot of decks out there. Like, look at the Four Horsemen. You make a mistake, and you're <laughs> just done. Yeah, or, you know, you do something slightly wrong, and you're just and done, just too. And over. Yeah, I mean, if you just... Or even just, as you saw in the matchup, you draw the yeah. wrong card. Maybe even use a Brainstorm at the wrong time. I just don't know the perfect plays in this format because they're so elaborate. Right, oh, so now Ben... It's I, Ben's turn. Now it's Ben's definitely going down. Six cards for uh, Mr. Swartz. And ha- didn't, certainly didn't stop him some of the past games we watched, though. So... No, I mean, he's been mulliganing and winning, so... Yeah, it shows you how robust. And for a combo, when you consider that Ben's been able to mulligan and win with a combo that takes basically two cards, mm-hmm. plus you have to kind of set it up a little bit, you have to give the intuition for pieces... He gives and, you a, and Sean's not pressuring him that much, so mulligan isn't that important. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long day for both competitors. Both of them were here bright and early this morning in 8, 9, 10... Ten, played ten rounds so far. Yeah, it's right? been a very long day. Yeah, at least at least some of them were in the top eight this week. Uh, last week we, I, I believe we had one player in the top eight who also made Caleb. top eight. Yeah, Caleb Durward, right? Who p- played more Magic than I think anybody could could have be played. Same with AJ a couple a month or two ago as yeah. well. It's insane. I mean, you have to get up and be here at <laughs> seven in the morning, and you're here playing yeah. until ten o'clock that, at night. That's absolutely insane. Two when different you play formats all day on day one, and then you get up at 7 in the morning, come here, play three rounds of Magic, win a tournament, start it all over again, and make finals the next day, or make even top eight, that's that's on. That's just amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. All right, so their players keep, and they are off to the races. Sean Ryan cracks a scalding tarn on his first turn, finding a Taiga. Looks like Ben's hand is a couple brainstorms, I think a ponder, I think it might be a one-lander with a bunch of cantrips. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mull the six, probably have to keep something like that. Down I mean, comes. You can't really mulligan that. Down comes Noble Hierarch. And I think we're probably going to see something, something like a ponder from Ben Swartz mm-hmm. this turn. All right, and Ben draws. Finds packed in negation. There's not a mental mess up. He might have missed up in his hand too, but he definitely has a bunch of cantrips. Right, yeah, no, I think he just drew a mental misstep. Oh, he just drew a misstep. Yeah. Sure. Ancient Tomb, City. I think that's exactly Shontel. what he wants, right? Shontel. Does he have a biggie? I, he, oh, he already showed until in his hand, actually. Yeah, he needs a big one. Oh, he's just going to send him back. Feels like he can find more land elsewhere. Yeah, he doesn't have any big things to throw down. I think he's really light on lands, but he needs he knows he needs he something big. He can't really get all three of those, yeah. Yeah, because then you're probably stuck drawing them. And Although he does have an intuition you could potentially use, but... Alright, I think he drew a force there. Or no, he drew Emrakul. <laughs> so that's that's turn two. That is turn two. Does he have a force in his hand? I don't know if he's got force. I don't think he's got force in his hand. But if he draws one, that's going to be insane. Yeah. If he just goes runner, runner, just turn two Emrakul. <laughs> that, that's how we do it. Welcome to the hive mind. <laughs> Alright. Sean Ryan... Uh, cracks fetch land goes to get volcanic island. I don't think he's got force. Uh, yeah, Ben. Do you just go for it though. You, I mean, that might be reasonable because the more time you give Sean Ryan, the more mm-hmm. dangerous things get. If you're Ben, I think you might just go for it. I think Sean might have a force anyway, but even though he's pitching two cards, it's 
early in the game, he hasn't had a chance to sculpt his hand. I mean, what if he like, if he doesn't go for it now, then maybe, you know, he might. He, it just seems like he might have to go it because what if he just goes natural order this next turn? Right. Oh, oh Vanillion Van Click. Vanillion Click just ruins the day every oh, time. <laughs> that'll change the story. That card, so powerful. Brainstorm though will help mm -hmm. uh, help out a oh, little. Oh, Brainstorm bit. just gets to hide everything. Yep, that'll definitely hide. Probably hide Show and Tell Emrakul, right? Yeah, I would definitely hide both. All right, let's see if it resolves. Oh. And Sean Ryan gives it the thumbs up. Finds a land, a ponder, and a Pact of the Titan. And we're just gonna put Show and Emrakul yep. on top. Yeah, it's gonna hide the the powerful spells. I think you put an Emrakul on top, show beneath it, right? Uh, yep. is, it, is it really relevant? Uh, well, if you could V-click next upkeep, it is. I mean, is it going to V-click? I mean, it's possible. It could happen. I mean, you know, just once again, I think you make the it. The slight you, little edge. Right. You, you put Emrakul on top just so your show resolves because that's a better card to have in your hand. Right. I just don't think that play is going to be made. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you, just, you know, all about the small edges that are probably never going to matter, and occasionally they do. Oh, I agree. And so now that's going to resolve. Vendelli click. Come into play. I believe, believe Sean's just going to target Ben, right? I, I, I assume he's going to target Ben. Did Maybe he didn't just for the fact that he brainstormed, put two cards, and he's like, well, I'm not going to get any value out of it anyway. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like knowing what Ben has in his hand is just really important here. Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe getting rid of that card, though. Yeah, I mean, if, if Sean's just digging into natural order and he really needs a land or something, right? Or really needs a spells. And and it makes sense. Like, you're not going to get any value. He's not going to take anything. It's just information, yet now he just drew a card. All right, now I think, does Ben have to ponder? Oh, I guess not. I was going to say, if Ben wants to set up the uh, show and tell next turn, he'll have to ponder yeah. and cantrip because the, the click didn't dig him any further. I think he has time. I think he wants to wait. Yeah, he did, he did not natural order, which is very important. So, uh, I think he just wants to wait one more turn so he can just make sure that he can get another opportunity to get um, Force of the Will. Yeah. Um, Alright, untap, draw. Alright, so Ben's got lands, has intuition. Do you think he ponders now? Well, it depends. I mean, does he still want the card on top? I mean, possibly. If he wants a card on top, I don't, just no, I don't really feel that pondering because you don't really want to shuffle yeah. them. Um, and so there's a ponder. So Ben does use a ponder here. See, so he's show and tell, land, land. So now it's kind of an awkward situation where I think he would... Well, he can show and tell this turn if he wants to. Right, he can put down that. He just goes for it. I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe. All right. I think... <laughs> Yep, I think he's gonna do it. Time to go for a show. You can intuition try again. No, or no, not. No, he didn't. I think maybe he just goes intuition end step. See yeah. what happens. Well, the intuition's not gonna counter, but he can maybe go for a force. Um, worth noting is Ben can intuition for high mind, and if he's got another two mana land or finds another two mana land, he can play it next turn. All right. Um, of course. We saw Dangerous Intuition was last round where Chris Van Meter cast Intuition and Sean Ryan just mm -hmm. extracted all the cards of his choice out of Ben yeah. Schwartz's deck. I feel like he might just want Force. Like, like. There's Intuition. Oh, getting three Forces? I kind of yeah. like that. Protect Emer I mean, once Emrakul hits, it's game. Yep, Sean Ryan does not have Jace the Mind Sculptor. That's yeah. better than all. Oh, he's doing it. He sees the play. I you can't see me right now, but we got my hands in the air. I like that play by Ben Swartz. <laughs> I like that play a lot. I'm learning Legacy. <laughs> yeah, best way to learn Legacy. Watch, watch it all day watch long. Watch 10 rounds, yeah. Talk about immersing yourself in a format. I hope Ben goes for it. Oh, that's what he goes, wants. Got three force wills. All right, so if Ben wants to win the game, that, I think that's yeah, the best way to, to do now. it. Now Sean Ryan has to have either an extraction and a force will or two force of wills and two blue cards. Yep. And he's been dropping a lot of noble hearts, so who knows? All right. There's a good possibility that he has extraction force. But at least he has to blow his extraction. Like, yeah. Like, that's very relevant. All right, oh. so puts a force into his hand. And... Yeah, there's yeah, the extraction. There's the extraction. It makes sense. I mean, Sean had been doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Seems like likely he was going to have that kind of card in his hand. And mental misstep from Ben Swartz puts an end to that. Ooh, dun, dun, dun. Let's see if Sean Ryan... Now, will Sean Ryan blow a force on that? 
No, like, you can't blow right, force exactly. on it. Right, exactly. You can't afford to blow force on it. On it. He's just got to, especially if he only has one force, he's got to hope he doesn't have an actual combo in his hand. Been sitting at eight, but that Emrakul should still do, do the trick. Oh, man. All right, Sean Pyroblasts. Oh, well, that works. Or Red Elemental Blast, excuse me. And, all right. All right, so that resolves. Happens. And Surgical Extraction. Resolves, but he still needs to have a Force. He only has two cards in hand. All right. And even if, even if Ben goes for it and he Forces, then Sean is, I mean, he still has that click, I guess, but... Well, I mean, a click is going to kill Ben in two turns. Yeah. So, so I mean, Ben just has to go for I it mean, anyway. Well, of course, he's going to go for it, and if he has Force Land or Force Blue card, uh, the game's just over. You, you know, he has a Titan, and he's going to... He, he's not going to be able to get up to six lands anyway to even top deck a... Hive Mind. Hive Mind, and plus he's going to be able to pay for the, the yeah, Red Pack. Pay for the Red Pack. The Red Pack's really bad in Smash I think, like, some of those should be sided out. Yeah, I mean, the green pack's even worse, but like <laughs> slaughter pack is the best one. Yeah, the slaughter pack is so good. I think I think maybe the sideboard plan is you bring one of the pa slaughter packs and board yeah, out for one sure. of the others. All right, and so Ben gets extracted, and I think we're gonna see him go for show until next round. Uh, Wyatt on Twitter points out that Sean has two red blasts in his hand. I didn't see those yet, but if he had if a key nine, yeah, it's game. Yeah, and if he has two, especially man, I wonder what I thought about well, it. Well, one so just got used. Yeah. yeah. Island's not gonna do it. All right, there's show and tell. There's uh, that one. So he does have one more turn. He could draw, draw show, and show and tell. Yeah, but because of the city, he's not able to play any of the lands in his hand. That's kind of frustrating. Yeah. So, I mean, he can't, I mean, I don't know, what, he doesn't really need to play lands in his hand too much either. Mm -hmm. But then we're much. in the same situation where he can't attack with the Emrakul if Sean can get put one more permanent into play. Right. All right, so Ben's just going to pass to Sean. Sean untaps. Draws. Attack for click for five, drop Ben down to only three life. And now Ben needs to find a show and tell. Or slaughter pack. Slaughter pack would do too. Hive mind. And he the hive mind won't do it. He can play hive mind, he can try and get him, but I don't think that, that one's gonna work here. I don't think it's gonna work. No, I don't think he gets two of those free in the top eight. No, there's no way. It would be insane if he did, however. I don't think it's gonna work twice. No, he's gonna go for it, so he floats two mana. Oh, he just passes the turn. Why would he... He just yeah. didn't, didn't even want to bother going for it, I guess. He's trying to bluff Slaughter Pack. I mean, Sean's going to attack no matter what happens, right? Well, of right? course, but like that's that's the only logic I can say of him even doing that. I mean, I think you I think it's just go for it, and it's not probably not going to happen, but you've got to take your 0.5% yeah. out. This is worse. Yeah. I think it's worse than 0 0.5. <laughs> like, really worse. But it's a better percent than just playing the land saying good and then losing. Or 0.05, that's yeah. what I meant to say. But yeah. All right, so here we are. We're headed into game three. Mm -hmm. At least we can give him a shock. Like one thing that happened in uh, Amsterdam when I was playing against Kai, it was game four, and I play Slaughter Pact. And uh, he goes, uh, Brave the Elements. And, you know, we keep playing out the turn. And uh, anyway, it goes to my upkeep, and I go upkeep draw, and, and I'm down I'm down two to one. And, and Kai just goes, uh, Pact, you forgot to pay Pact. And for a second, my heart just stopped, right? <laughs> And, and I thought I just, like, actually just threw away top eight match. <laughs> For no reason, I was going to win that game. And, and then I remembered, you know, Brave the Elements countered it. And it was scary, though. He got me for a second. And I bet Ben would get him, too. He just, like, packed, I win, give him those eyes. And they would at least, like, you know, skip a heartbeat. Yeah, and, and even if that doesn't get them, just, like, for a second, you just throw them off the game. It's kind of like icing the kicker, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it would really work, but it's, it, it, it's there. I mean, you could, you could justify it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know my heart skipped a beat when that happened. <laughs> I certainly can't blame you. I, if, if I was playing in the top eight of a pro tour and that happened to me, I would just be like, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I lost in a Pro Tour because I, I forgot to I pay for I would have ran out of the site and hid if that actually yeah. happened. I mean, I would buy a dice to put on top of my deck so large, I would never miss it. It would be like It can't pink. be bigger than it's, your deck, It's though. true. It would be like pink and purpley and sparkly and probably have it like... Would, the, shi it would shine. And instead of numbers, it just have the pictures of packs on every, di yeah. on every <laughs> dial. So I'd be like, switch it to the red patch. And, and then every the five seconds it says pack, 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 pack. Yeah, it, it's, got, it's automatic. Outside notes, so we got to be careful. Oh, true. Can't, do, can't use outside notes. Um, <laughs> this looks like Sean is taking a quick break. But yeah, we'll head into game three here shortly. So after watching two games play out, who do you think's got it and for game three? Ben's on the play. Is that going to be a big difference? Ben gets the play. He's, you know, he mulliganed game two. And, uh, but like, like I said, uh, Sean had all the answers, had a vanilla click, put the pressure on. And got the game, and so I feel like it's in uh, Sean's favor. I really do feel like the matchup's in his favor, but in the same way, you know, the the deck, the the high of my deck has the ability to just not draw and kill a person. Right. So I feel like actually one of the key cards here is that Vendillion Click because mm -hmm. it provides a really quick clock when you think about Vendillion it. Vendillion Click is like the perfect magic card. It's like one of my favorite <laughs> designs. It is. It has a relevant ability, a relevant body. It, it's it's fine as relevant. Everything just makes that card really good. I just love I love how it's made. It's never it's never going to be broken, but it's always going to be good enough. And that that that's a good card to me. And it's certainly certainly powerful here too. I mean, it's just like every game we've watched Sean Ryan play three, four, maybe five games since Hive Mind yeah. now. And every time we cast them, done click, it's just so strong. It puts a clock on them. You take their best card. Mm -hmm. It wins a lot of games of Magic. That card, I mean, I played with a lot. I've qualified with that card three or four times for the Pro Tour. Like, that card is unbelievable. Really? Yeah. How many times have you qualified for the Pro Tour? Five. Five or six. And the whole of them with Vanilla Click? <laughs> uh, three, I think four of the five times I qualified for Vanilla Click. That's crazy. Fairies, Blue Black Ninjas, uh, Fairies and Extended, and maybe it's only three. So, you made the, the Ninja deck? Which tournament? Oh, that was last year. That was that was last year. I don't want to be yeah. cute with that deck. Yeah. Um, I think there's a fourth one. I might be forgetting. I thought my head. But anyway, sure. and, and I made finals of like several PTQs of like mm -hmm. Ben Deli Click deck. So love that card. I agree. Yeah, no, it's a great card. All right, so we're back in. Both players seem very happy. And you know, there's there's fourteen hundred dollars on the line right now. There's a ton of money on the line, and they didn't split. No, these guys no are split. battling it out. It all comes down to this one game. The whole weekend. One game for fourteen hundred dollars. That is a ton, ton of uh, money to a game. Ben Schwartz takes the mulligan. Oh, it seems to be a trend for Ben these yeah, days. Yeah, I know. He, I think he's probably made some kind of evil deal. He has to mulligan every game, but he gets good draws. <laughs> so, he's like, eh, all right, fair trade. Sean looks like to be keeping. Uh, he seems. I can't. I can't tell if he's either smug or like I'll keep it. I'm disappointed. It's one of those two <laughs> looks. I'm not sure which. It's probably what you want to wear. Let's see. Shuffles him up. Ben, ben, ben just taking a deep breath, trying to hone his like, chakra, on, align. Let me keep this six. Let me keep this six. Hone his chakra, align his aura, count his lucky stars, rub his rabbit's feet. Let's see what he finds here on six cards. And Ben puts his hands on his head like, please be good. Yeah. <laughs> he came this far. He wants to win it out. Right. All right, let's see what Can't he give Sean Ryan four matches in a row to beat this deck. It's high I mean, there we'll see. I think Days might become the new go-to card in No Rug. How does Ben like this hand? All right. Uh, I don't know. It's not a snap keep. It was certainly not a snap keep. He's certainly thinking about, it, which is good, but at the same time, it's dangerous. All right, and we're off. Turn one, Grim Monolith. Well, that's not a bad start. Oh, is that the? Uh, is he? Is he a little bit of Hollywood? Uh, no, oh. I don't. Oh, wait, does he have turn two high mind pack? I don't know if he's got pack, but he has turn two high mind, I think. And a force, but he doesn't have. He's got intuition? Yeah, he, no, just, he, he has the pack. He's, right he's just got the. <laughs> really? He just yeah. had, had the Hollywood draw? We're, we're, we're being quiet right now because, like, if we can't scream or they're going to hear us. If Ben just goes for it, he wins. Pretty sure he's got the force. He, he has to have two up. forces. Yeah, he's got a force to back it up. He's just double checking, making sure he's not missing anything here. He, he, Wait, he just passes the turn. Why? Why would you pass? Are you sure he's got everything? I don't know if he has the pack. There's a red card in his hand. It's got to be packed with the Titan. So I think his hand is intuition, force, 
hive mind. No, no, it's right there. Why wouldn't he go for it? I don't know why you wouldn't go for it there. I mean, what is he? What more could he possibly want? He has a force and he has a combo. Yeah. So Sean would, and I think if you're like Sean has two forces in his opening hand, I accept that I lose that game. It's not even over yet. What? It's not really over. I mean, Sean yeah. goes down to three cards. Yeah, so. Even then, it's not over. I don't know why Ben wouldn't go for it there. That baffles me. When Ben wins, he's gonna have to come in the booth and explain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is, is he just a reason missing something here? I mean, pr I have to be. I mean, so he has the high mind. He has I think the, so. He has the pack. He has the intuition. He has a force. It's probably four best cards you could ask for. Yeah. High mind, pack, intuition. He even has a card to pitch to the force. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess probably the best is show and tell, right? Show and tell Amber Cool with the force. I mean, that's obviously the best part of the combo. I mean, like, sure. I mean, it doesn't but, matter. I mean, he's, uh, was he worried about days? But no, his opponent didn't. Oh yeah, his maybe opponent he, did have him. Maybe he's around days once Sean's gonna tap. Yeah, he didn't really want to get blown up by days, that's true. Uh, once again, those days are coming in. I mean, play. he could just intuition for a blue pack, and then if he draws a blue spell, then he has yeah. two. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually... Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, yeah. I forgot about days, so now he can just do this, yeah. and that's pretty tight play by Ben. He, yeah, could, very he, tight. I think a lot of players, <laughs> you and me both, yeah, we were like, like alright, just... bang, 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 you're dead. But, there's, there is a difference, like the one thing about like commentating that I found is like I'm not in the same level I would be if I was playing. Because it's hard to talk about it, try to figure out the, the commentary. For both players? Yeah, for both players as well as think about one player. It's kind of like the same thing with a video. I've definitely found myself punting when I'm recording a video just because I didn't get that deep in a line of play. Right. So now I think we're just going to see three, three blue packs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Back, back. Okay, now Ben so, should have So now we found the line. We found yeah. the line. It took us It took us a turn, but yeah. we found the I line. Just, man, forget about days. Those days are just brutal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't need double force. You needed a days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those days are just absolutely brutal in Sean Ryan's deck. And I, I think that no rug decks are just going to need to start adapting them. And when your opponent does that on turn two, Sean Ryan's got to be not, like, got to be shaking his boots. Like, triple what? pack negation, huh? This is bad news. Crazy hand by Ben and Swartz. Mulligan to six and pretty much had exactly what he needed. We'll see if Sean Ryan has the answer, but you think it would take quite an insane hand, an equally insane hand by Sean Ryan. Yeah. Alright, ships in one pack, two going to the graveyard. Oh, he could have surgical extraction, yeah, but he, he doesn't. Surgical, but he's not doing anything. He doesn't have the extraction. Well, he'd wait until he draw, right? Alright, there's, there's some. Yeah, so. Now he has pack plus four. Right, now he's gonna go for it. Alright, there we are. Six mana, hive mind. What do you got, Sean Ryan? Days returning a land. Days in the hive mind. Okay, days is the hive mind. No, wait, he just. Oh no, he doesn't want his grim mana left to not be untapped. Right, and now you force the days. Oh, you packed. No, 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 no. Packing the days is worse than forcing the days. No, because he, he can't kill. Because don't you want to pack the days after? Well, I guess I guess not. I guess he's not gonna let Hive Mind resolve, so it's not gonna matter. Like well, I, he's all in. Right. I just no, because if you you can't force anymore, because oh yeah, you can still force. All right, force removing a Hive Mind. I mean, what's happening now? So he days. Days. I think Sean Ryan said he was gonna. Oh, he already said he was doing something. Uh, blast. Yeah. Force removing Hive Mind. Sean Ryan have a force? Does Sean Ryan have another daze? Is that all she wrote? Well, if he can't have a daze. Because he's... <laughs> Sean Ryan reads high Oh, mind. he could have a daze. Yeah, he could have a daze to counter the high mind. Oh, well, daze won't work after high mind resolves because Sean Ryan doesn't yeah, have no, any. no, but he could still daze the high mind right. at, the, at the moment. He still daze the high mind at the moment, correct. What does Sean Ryan have? Does he have it? Packed. I think that's it. Yeah, I think Ben Swartz just won it just all. Just had the he, perfect He had draw. the perfect line. He, he beat the day. <laughs> Look at Sean Ryan's face. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's like, yeah, I had all these. <laughs> like, and that's it. Congratulations, Ben Swartz. Ben Swartz. Two that games was, to one. A great tight way finals. To this tournament. Uh, ben <laughs> found a line that beat through exactly what Sean had. I mean, we missed it. Like yeah. that that's so impressive. I, I'm I'm so proud of him. I've I've always liked the guy. I've never gotten to watch him play much magic. And that game alone just showed exactly how like how, how capable he is to win a tournament. Yeah, and we're gonna have Ben back here in the booth as soon as possible sure. to tell you guys 
about his high mind deck, what he was thinking about it, some of the plays he made. Yeah, they, they were very impressive. 